Talking to the children about this is a great day for Sturbridge, it's a great day for America. That these young people are willing to be here to help us recognize, remember, and honor our Revolutionary War veterans. There were 122 or so that fought in the revolution altogether. 65 are buried here in the old burial ground. We took a gentleman by the name of Bill Bonsley to go through all the graves 
You gotta put if you're speaking to this, you gotta get in real close, like you're gonna eat it. Okay, this is America, and I think it would be nice if in my Boston Burgess children, if they would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. And I think a rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, not like they do in NASCAR, they get these starlets who come up and sing and they slaughter the song. I think that's a sacrilege. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose such lights and bright stars through the perilous night For to them are we watch Streaming and the rock is quickly rolled on the string. Gave food to the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? I would like to ask our town administrator, Jeff Bridges, who's new to Sturbridge. And we're, we're glad to have you, Jeff. Say a few words, please. Thank you, Bob. I want to thank uh, Bob Greer for putting this on today. I also want to welcome everybody to the town of Sturbridge. I'm probably the newest person here to the town, but welcome. Can you hear? There we go. How's that? Uh, I want to thank all the veterans here today for their service. Without their service and your service, this would not be possible today. So thank you very much. If we can give all the veterans a round of applause. And for those we're here to honor, for the school kids here today, some of these 65 soldiers and patriots here today aren't much older than you are. But even at that young age, they believed in something so profoundly that they were willing to fight and possibly die in order to change the world. And that's what they did. These young men and women and young people in America changed the world. So I pray someday you believe in something that passionately, but I also pray that you never have to make that sacrifice. But uh, thank you all for coming, and I appreciate you coming out to the town of Sturbridge. Thank you, Jeff. One of the persons that cares about Sturbridge almost as much as I do, but I'm, I'm a little older than he is. He's young and spirited, but he fights hard for all of us every day. He's our state representative, goes to Boston, and that in itself is a challenge, trust me. I've been to Boston in the morning, the same time he goes in. If you want to be a race car driver, that's where you can practice. And I'd like to ask Todd Muller, who always has words of wisdom. Thank you, Bob. I'm not sure about the wisdom part, but I have words. There's no, no doubt about that. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, this is an important day in and of itself, but the fact that the students are here today makes it special. I want to give a round of applause to the students that are here today. Thank you so much. 
to Mr. Kelly and the staff uh, over there that does such a great job of participating in this ceremony every single year. It's so critically important that they are here. Um, I don't want to out Bob Breer, but I think this tradition started, or it was around, but it, it stopped. But he remembers it about 80 years ago when he was in first grade. Okay, he, he's not 80 years old. He's much younger than that, but still, he, he remembers it. He remembered it and decided a few years ago that this was an important tradition to bring back here in the town of Sturbridge, to recognize these individuals that are interred here for the sacrifice that they made for our country. And that's something that's pretty spectacular. We've got a great historian right here in Bob Breer, but he does so much beyond just organizing this ceremony. And if you haven't heard me say this before, on legislative initiatives that are important to historical things that are going on across our state and in our region of Massachusetts, Bob Breer is a guy that gets in his car, drives out to eastern Massachusetts, he testifies on bills, he is an outstanding advocate, and I just want to recognize Bob and thank you for all that you do. Thank you. We are a great country, uh, but it is wrong to demand total perfection from the United States of America. But it is very right to demand that we are strive to become a more perfect union. And that is our responsibility as individuals. The greatness of what we are about in this country is the fact that we participate in an active democracy. And it doesn't succeed unless we as individuals are activated every single day. I go into classrooms across my district and I talk to kindergarten kids all the way up to, to seniors that are about ready to go on to college in the next stage of their life. And I tell them that they are as important, if not more important, than this great American experience that we are all participating in. And if we are not active in that, we will have difficulty promoting the very values that the individuals that are here today that we are recognizing stood for, stood for rights and freedom and democracy that we have evolved over the course of the last 200 years to make it better. And the minute that we stop working to make it better, we're going to be in trouble. So the greatness of what we are is within its people. And I want you students to remember that, that one day you will be standing where I'm standing, holding the microphone. You will be educating students from Burgess. You will be telling them the importance of coming together at this ceremony to say thank you pay tribute to these men that are here and to pay tribute to all the veterans that put their lives on the line to represent the very best of what our country is all about. They answer a cause greater than that of themselves. They put everything in their personal lives on the side so they can go and march in foreign countries, even here and throughout our history on American soil, to defend the very nature and the rights of what our democracy stands for. So critically important. And it's important that we say thank you, not just when we come together on Memorial Day, but that we are grateful. Everything that we are, everything that we have, every freedom that we enjoy, your ability to go to school, to be able to say things, to be able to go places, to be able to have things, to be able to live with family, to be able to say what you want to say in the classroom, all of that is given to us by American men and women that serve as veterans. Make sure today, as you pay tribute to these individuals that are here, that you remember that sacrifice every single day of your lives. It's because of that sacrifice that we live in the greatest country in the world, and that country is the United States of America. Thank you for being here today. Todd is able to be here, Senator Diane Groby. She's playing in Boston with our money. So we're lucky we have for District 8, Lucas McDiamond here today. Lucas? She's not playing with our money. She's working on the on the state budget, which will affect all of us. So I guess it's better she'd be there than here. Thank you, Mr. Breer. Uh, so I've prepared uh, just a few words, uh, and I want to just second what Representative Smola has said uh, just about how wonderful it is to be here with all of you uh, and partake in this, this truly important part of our history. Um, as we prepare for a weekend of picnics and parades, it is important to hold dear to the truest meaning of Memorial Day. Certainly, it allows us time to reunite with family and friends. Yet, as we bask in the sun, surrounded by the aroma of a backyard barbecue, the happy sound of our families, please remember what this day is truly about. Let us recall the depth and solemnity the truly awesome impact of what Memorial Day is all about. Take in the joy around us, the delight of our loved ones, our families, friends, and neighbors, but remember the cost. 
Look around you today and throughout the weekend. Know that all that you do and see, all that you enjoy and experience is because of someone else's loved one who is not here. Look around you and see the veterans. Know that they have lost comrades in arms on, on faraway shores. Remember the sacrifice of the few made so that we might live free. Memorial Day is a day to recall the cost of our freedom. Throughout the weekend, despite the festivities, despite the tempo of the marching drums at the parades, let us know that the day is about honor and sacrifice. Abraham Lincoln referred to their sacrifice as the last full measure of devotion. What devotion they must have felt to this idea of ours, this promise of new light and new hope that is our America. The lives we lead, the America we go forth and create, our democratic experiment, that is the legacy of those who so bravely laid down their lives. What devotion, uh, excuse me, what devotion, what a love they must have felt. More than that, how they must have believed. Their belief in America, in their comrades, in their communities, and in the Americans they never had the chance to meet, was so great that despite their own fears and the sorrows, the men and women of our armed forces gave their lives that we might have another tomorrow. For the battles that gave way to the birth of our nation throughout our shared history, American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have stood to defend our freedom. At Lexington and Concord in the American Revolution, at Gettysburg in the wilderness and during the Civil War, in the trenches of World War I, from the Ardennes and Bastogne to the South Pacific in World War II, in Korea and Vietnam. Still, today around the world, American servicemen and service women make the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me in Afghanistan and Iraq, to lesser known but no less courageous missions in Africa and Asia, we owe our daily experience to those who so willingly risked their lives and did not make it home. So when we pledge allegiance to the flag, let us stand a little taller. Let our voices ring forth a little louder. Let our voices echo those who have come before as our flag is raised to the top of the mast. Remember the cost of our freedom, and let us remember the truest, most solemn meaning of that day. Then, with courage and confidence, let us go out and do our best to honor that greatest sacrifice by building a tomorrow of which they would be proud. As I leave you, I found uh, what I thought would be a fitting poem, an, an excerpt from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's Decoration Day. All is reposed in peace. Untrampled lies the sod. The shouts of battle cease. It is the truce of God. Rest, comrades, rest and sleep. The thoughts of men shall be as sentinels to keep your rest from danger. Your silent tents of green, we deck with fragrant flowers. Yours has been the suffering, the memory shall be ours. It is our privilege to have the daughters of the American Revolution here. Caroline Bigelow couldn't be here, but here are Anne-Marie Savay from the Captain Joseph chapter and members of her chapter, Addie Healy, Sylvia Gamage, Caroline Lavalley, and I'm sorry, Anne-Marie, I missed the cross lady that came. Oh, Pam. Pam. Pam, all right, Pam, thank you for being here. And from the regent of the General Ebenezer's Ebenezer Learned Chapter, Helen Paria, Good morning, everyone. Okay. On behalf of the Captain Joe Knapp chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, thank you for inviting us today to honor and decorate the graves of these revolutionary patriots. These patriots risked their lives and fortunes for freedom and independence. The liberties enjoyed today in America are the legacy of these brave patriots. Their sacrifices and bravery must never be forgotten. And I also have a poem that I'd like to share with all of you. It's titled, In Loving Memory. On every soldier's tombstone should be a message of honor, respect, and love. In loving memory of one who loved his country, who fought against evil to preserve what is right and true and good. In loving memory of one who was cut above the rest of us who had the surpassing courage, the uncommon strength, to do whatever had to be done. 
preserving through hardship and pain, and loving memory of one who was brave enough to give his life, his all, so that those he cared about would remain safe and free, and loving memory of a unique and treasured soldier who will never be forgotten. Thank you, ladies, for being here. It makes an important part of our day. And from the Colonel Henry Knox, Regimental Patriots, I'd like to introduce their executive commander, Jack Cunningham. These guys came all the way to Boston, from Boston to be here, and we really appreciate that. We are the Colonel Henry Knox Regimental Color Guard of the Massachusetts Society, Sons of the American Revolution. Each one of us has a patriot ancestor. That is a requirement for joining our organization. So we are the seventh, eighth, and sometimes ninth grandsons of someone who participated in the revolution. Some of us have several <laughs> patriot ancestors. And doing our research, some of us have discovered that we are cousins. So uh, one guardsman may have a Adam's ancestor and find out that uh, another guardsman has another Adam's ancestor, etc. But um, we don't have a lock on patriotism. Some of us are veterans, some of us are not, but we are all patriots. We love our country and what it stands for. We honor our founding fathers, our Constitution, and our Bill of Rights. And we try and bring a little bit of history to this present generation. And when I look out and I see these young men and women, I can tell their patriots. I can feel their patriotism. And I can feel their love of country. I can feel their pride, and I know that the future is secure. So I want to thank you for allowing us to be here today at the conclusion of um, the uh, flowers. We will render what we consider to be the highest military honor, the rendering of a musket salute to our fallen patriot ancestors. And uh, as uh, one of our patriot ancestors once said they believed that resistance to tyranny was obedience to God. And that's why they were so willing to give up their lives in the creation of the United States of America. You have a relative. I got several relatives here, but I didn't want to bring it up. But uh, <laughs> anybody in here named Harding is a relative of mine. Um, and there may be a few others I don't know about yet, but thanks to your research, um, I've discovered that. So um, that's why I make darn sure I come here. Thank you, Jack. There's one person that I ask every year, would you do it again? He always says, of course we'll do it again. And I'd like to just introduce Michael Glick, the innkeeper of the public house, they're the ones that provide the geraniums each year for us, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Members of the Spirits Lions Club and the Yellow Jackets will be in the burial ground when the children go in. Any questions you have, children, or want to know where to put the flower, they'll help you do that. And make sure that all of you get back on the bus. We don't want to leave somebody behind. You have to get become one of them. No! It certainly would be for the next person I'd like to introduce because she has a lot of kids. Over a thousand? Nine hundred children she has. That's a, She's a great mother too, I know that. I'd like to introduce Kathy Pelley, the principal of Burgess, who makes this day what it is. Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to echo some of the words of the people who have spoken before me, and I want to start with Mr. Briere. Mr. Briere, 
started off in his speech with people saying yes to him. Well, all of you who are here participating know it is very difficult to say no to Mr. Briere. I will re I recall my first month on the job, you now five years ago, Bob, believe it or not, that Bob came to my school, introduced himself, and said, I'd like to take you on a tour of Sturbridge. I thought, you know, we're looking at an hour, an hour and a half. I think we ended up two days. He, he had me in heels down on lead mine at the caves, um, and I learned so much about Sturbridge from this man. He is a tremendous cheerleader, as Mr. Smola said, an advocate for the town of Sturbridge. So we thank him. It would not be possible. This never would have happened without him. So thank you for your service to your country and your service to Sturbridge. I'd also like to reflect on the tradition of Memorial Day. Burgess has a very strong tradition. Year after year, we assemble, yes, 900 students, 150 adults, crowd into the lower gym, and we have an amazing, solemn occasion. The children are participating, the band um, under the direction of Mr. Minchoff performs, as well as our chorus under the direction of Mr. Krilovich, and it is an outstanding, solemn event that I'm sure that the children of Burgess will remember for the rest of their lives and understand the true meaning of Memorial Day. I believe that this opportunity enhances their memory and I am sure, like Bob, when they are older, they will remember the day that they came to the cemetery to place geraniums at the graves of the Revolutionary War soldiers. I would like to just end by thanking Mrs. Brosnan, Mrs. Parent, Mrs. Cahill, Mrs. Shulo, Mr. Minchoff for their um, work in preparing the students for today. And, Again, thank the students for their participation. Thank you. If you think putting 900 children standing and sitting on the floor in a gymnasium and keeping them quiet, all she has to do is stand up and look around. It becomes very quiet. Uh, together all like the wars America has been through and we researched them and we put them together here for Mr. Breer and we made posters about them. You got some writing to do here. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan knows they don't just go to for time to have lunch and go out and play. They work out. Thank you all students and we appreciate that. Well, we're doing presentations. Sons of the American Revolution would like to present you with the challenge. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, you do. Thank you. I spent four years. I had the opportunity to go to Japan, Korea, and Florida. And I had an enjoyable life in the service because, and I think this is important for you young people, all through life, Choose your friends carefully. Choose people that are kind. Choose people that will do. Choose people that will be helpful to other people and that they'll be your good friend. Because I found in four years that I had some very good friends across this country. And I wouldn't do the four years like that without having good friends like they were. Uh, it had been a disastrous four years. It is time now. I'm check my list, make sure we didn't miss anybody. Okay, where is Lacey? Could you come up here, Lacey, please? Lacey has somebody here today that is very important to all of us. 
Now I'd like you, Lacey, to introduce your mom. My mom is Julie Allen. Um, she's in the Air Force. Um, she's been in the Air Force for a few years now, and 19 years. And we've been, she's got the story a few times to Iraq, and it was kind of hard, but she's here now. You, you have been welcomed. <laughs> we have with us also Captain Timoth Timothy Parker, who is a real captain in the militia. And his stand-in today is Captain Timothy Parker and the Sturbridge Colonial Militia. And they will be also in the cemetery as the Sons of the American Revolution by the valley. But the most important part of why we are here is I'd like anybody who'd like to come forward and give us a hand to hand them out. Geraniums, children, wherever you see an American flag, place a geranium. Just as I did 80 years ago. Holy mackerel, where did the years go? <laughs> Remember when you place it, they kind of press down on the pot so that it will stand and not blow over in the breeze. <laughs> if you want to take an extra flower, kids, there may be some places you didn't get one. Okay, boys, I think we can come down. My closing remarks will be very brief. Just want your children and the adults to realize these American patriots that are interred here now, when they went to fight the Revolutionary War, they went to Concord and Lexington. Think about it. They gathered here on the common. They got the blessings from Joshua Payne, the reverend from the church over here. There were no cars. There were no buses. There are no trolley cars, certainly no airplanes in those days. They marched from here to Concord and Lexington. There were no fast food restaurants to go in and grab a burger. There were no restrooms. If they had to go, that was too bad because, well, they weren't there. Life was a whole lot different. These were farmers for the most part. There were crops to plant. This was in April. They had crops to plant. The last thing they needed was to be going off to a war, which this was. But they gave their time to their families and those generations like us that came after them. So these are people that gave their lives. Certainly not all of them died in war, but 65 of them came back and are buried here. To honor them, I would ask the Colonel Knapp, let you know, men to come forward. Left. Left. Hold them right. 
Firing. We have Blue Ghost from Burgess. They're going to play Taps. And he, uh, oops. Reed Thompson, Stephen Petchen, and Rachel Salisbury will be doing the honors, which will close out the ceremony. The end of our ceremony, great. Thank you. You are free to go. Or stay. Wander through our building if you'd like. 